What's going on everybody? In today's video, I got something a little different for you. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about if I had to redo all of this again, how would I advise buying gear? So this whole video is going to be broken up into three sections. I'm going to show you gear that I would recommend for the absolute beginner. I'm going to show you gear for those that are trying to get into gigging and gigging a lot. And then I'm going to do a, a third tier that's like, hey, I'm getting ready to start my own studio and produce my own music. What do you recommend? Before we get started in today's video, I just got to give a shout out to all my Patreon members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Also, I have released my first album today. So if you're watching this, consider checking out my Spotify. My artist name is the same as my YouTube name, Damien Andy. The name of the album is School Years. And it's basically a collection of all the songs that I've written while being a student at Full Sail University. So if you're interested in hearing my own art after you watch this video, please consider checking it out. You can see it wherever you stream music. Now let's get started. All right, let's talk about guitars. First of all, in today's economy, I don't really recommend buying new for the absolute beginners. The used market, basically we're in this interesting place where guitar, you know, during the pandemic in 2020 and 2021, we saw the most amount of guitar sales that we've seen in a long, long time, like really since the 70s and 80s. So all these guitar manufacturers started pumping out instruments. And then what happened is after the pandemic, people stopped buying guitars at the rate that they were. So there is an excess of new instruments and a plethora of used instruments. So what happens when we get into that economy is that typically used stuff or used stuff, you're going to get like just so much more bang for your buck. So some things to check out, I am always on Facebook Marketplace. You can get really good deals on there. However, if you know that guitar is something that you're gonna get into, buying new can be a good approach. And especially right now at Guitar Center, there's Guitarathon, and you can just find sales all the time. So the guitar that I really recommend, and find something that's suitable in your price range, because with a Telecaster, you can get a Squire one for $200, and you can go all the way up to like almost three grand, and then even more for boutique stuff. The one that I really recommend for most players, and this is a guitar that'll get you by one starting out, and it's also a guitar you can grow with to play gigs. And also, I mean, I record with this thing all the time. So this is a Made in Mexico. Mexico, well, it started off as a Made in Mexico Player Plus top. It's a Guitar Center exclusive, so it's got like the flame top that's not typical of the Telecaster. What I've done with my guitar, and kind of give you an idea of why I think Telecasters are the ultimate guitars, one, you can make them do whatever you need them to do. So, for example, I changed the pickups in this. Uh, and the stock pickups are great. I think the bridge pickup is a little weak if you want that twang, but uh, a Telecaster and Drop D, find me something that sounds better. <laughs> you just don't. I, I got into the Telecasters when I started playing in a country band, and we were playing in Drop C and D standard, and my Telecaster, I was just like, this is the ultimate guitar. I think, like, really it's a toss-up between the Telecaster and a Les Paul, the two grandfathers of the guitar. Pick one that sounds best to you, but I really believe that the Telecaster is probably the most versatile instrument, and it's not going to kill your back after a night. And trust me, my number one guitar is a Gibson Les Paul, so I'm telling you this from like a utility perspective. You just can't beat a Tele. So to give you some ideas of how an instrument can grow with you, I bought this instrument brand new on sale. I think I got it for like 550 bucks. Uh, some of the things I've done since then is the only thing that's really original in this guitar right now is the pick guard and the body everything else has been changed. So the pickups that I did is, uh, these are the Fishman Fluence pickups. Again, these are kind of expensive pickups, but I'm recording a lot and I just, I like having versatility. Fishman pickups are the best Telecaster pickups I've used. Uh, and I've used a lot. <laughs> I would say second favorite to these would be like the uh, the Seymour Duncan pickups are really good. Any of them. And also Lawler's. Lawler's and then uh, I have Sir pickups in my headless tele, my Stramberg, and I, I dig those as well. But these are, they're noiseless, so if you're coming from Humbucker World, you're not going to get the 60 cycle hum. It has two voicings, so what I tell people is while Fishman pickups are the cheapest, or the most expensive pickups right now for single coil, they're really the cheapest pickups because to do what these pickups do, you would really need two two guitars with two different sets of pickups and you get all that in one because I, I think I got these pickups for like 350 bucks and then I installed them myself so if you don't know how to install pickups you're probably going to spend like five six hundred bucks on these pickups because I had to like route wood and everything but the other thing I did and all this is done over time don't think that this is something you got to do all at once because if you see these numbers adding up it's scary but gas is a never-ending thing just play to it over time the other thing I did with this guitar is I changed the neck 
this is actually a roasted maple neck. I got this on sale for like 200 bucks at a local guitar shop. And then this is Fender's equivalent to like an Ibanez neck. It has a 12 inch radius. It's really similar to like a, a wizard profile, like a wizard three specifically, if you're familiar with that neck. Uh, it just has a little bit more shoulder, which I kind of play as a heathen and throw my thumb over. So it works best for me. And then the other thing I did was I put on locking tuners. This is like a hundred dollar upgrade. And then I put a graph tech synthetic uh, string trees. I say it helps with resonance. Sure. Uh, I just need a string trees and I mean, I, I went all graph tech because I also have the graph tech bridge too, which is supposed to help string breaks and also tuning stability because it's all, you know, well lubricated. Uh, I did have to change these out from the stock because the stock one had a burr on it and it, it kind of like, I would break strings on it and I'm not a hard picker. So for me breaking a string, I knew that had to go. Um, so if you start off with a Telecaster, you can get into a Tele at any price range and you can upgrade it as you go. And I'm a big fan of upgrading instruments instead of buying more instruments. And I know that, you know, I say that and there's a rack full of guitars behind me, but I, that learned that lesson from me. I was the type of player that I would buy an instrument and then it wasn't doing exactly what I wanted. So instead of modifying it to be that great guitar for me, I would just go buy another guitar. And I got myself in trouble in debt. So don't go in debt doing this stuff learn from me please but get you a good telecaster and upgrade it as you need be first thing i would always upgrade and this is going to be true I, we can talk parts and i'll show you some other stuff but the first thing i would upgrade is the nut after you've upgraded the nut i would probably upgrade the tuners those two things are going to help most of your tuning instability the next thing i would do is pickups we're really pots here where this connects most of the time they're using cheap pots get you a good set of cts pots you know it's 250k for single coil 500k from humbuckers don't overthink it uh, maybe a new switch Switch isn't as important as the pots because the pots is so crazy. If you take a cheap Squire guitar and then you put put like really good hardware underneath that's not sexy, like nothing is as sexy as putting in new pickups. I'm just gonna be real. But these are the things that aren't sexy but have the biggest impact. Change those out with good capacitors and you're doing really good for yourself. Any guitar that you buy, I am biased. I do all of my own guitar tech work. So learn how to set up your instrument. The first time you do it, it'll probably take you like two hours because you're uncomfortable, you're getting sweaty, learning how to what things are but there's a lot of great resources on youtube to learn how to set up your instrument if you have the you know the money to spend yeah take it into a guitar tech but not all guitar techs are created equal whenever we're talking about for the next piece of the gear which is going to be like amps or interfaces this is where it's really going to depend on where you're at if you are a brand new beginner and if you want to have like the best sounds without spending the biggest amount of money then probably the best thing you can do is buy you an interface so there's a ton of different interfaces out there but i'm going to recommend the scarlet interface you can get a 2i2 you can get all this pack like look this one right now is on sale 229 great deal any interface is going to be great because if you learn how to use it like, I don't know why so many, I think the reason why so many people will like make memes about the Scarlet is because it's like everybody's first interface. And if you're new to the world of audio engineering, like there's a lot you gotta learn. So it's really easy to shoot yourself in the foot and it's easy to point the blame on the interface when most of the time it's the guitar player or the person who's using the interface. Um, but if you get one of these interfaces, then the next thing I would recommend is looking at a company like Neural DSP. So let's just take a look at cost real quick. So for the interface, let's just call it $200 after tax. And then if you come over here and you go to plugins, which all of these were just, oh, they're still on sale, 50% off. I might actually snag this plenty one. Um, these are really great plugins. You know, I'll show you some of my favorites to help get you started. But at the end of the day, you can try all of these. You will need an iLock account, but all of that is free to set up. Some of my favorite ones that I would recommend for if you have none of these, uh, I've heard really good things about Archetype Plenty X. And I heard that you can use it on the Quad Cortex. Uh, the other one that I, I use personally a, a ton is Rabia. Rabia is really cool because it has a built-in synthesizer. So, and it's like crazy versatile. And that, that's gonna be kind of the point of these. They're all versatile, meaning you can do anything from like classic rock to modern metal to whatever you wanna do. I think Rabia is probably the best bang for your buck. The only other one that rivals it for me is the Petrucci model. So, you know, you're looking at what? 350 400 bucks and now you've got the tools where you can actually start recording uh they're really good amps for practicing you know you, you just need a computer and you need headphones which i would say most people watching this probably already have that and your computer is probably strong enough at least to run just the plug-in and standalone mode if you're a, a musician who's like in a band and you want like a decent amp that will get you by for a long time until you're ready to invest in a nicer amp. I really recommend the Boss Katana series. You know, get the one that's the the in your budget. They're all really, really good. 
This is the amp that I started out on, and I was playing in a band called The Portals. We were like a 1970s prog rock band. Uh, I had the 100 watt amp head with the uh, the cab because at the time I was really big into big gear. Now I'm the opposite. I'm like I want light stuff that's easy to pour, you know easy to transport. But this is a really good piece of gear. Uh, one of my buddies he plays or he played in a, a big cover band here in, in Colombia, and this is all that he used. He even used it as a pedal platform. So they're really great, you know. And I believe on these it has a USB port out, so you can't do this on Mac. At least when I had one, it may change with the latest operating system update. But you can record directly with the USB and there's like a, a software suite that comes with it where you can really dial in your tone and you can get the foot switch control. So I would really recommend getting one with an FC12 switch. It makes it, it opens it up for versatility and it's going to sound way better than most amps in this price range. I mean, like, look, 229 and you got an amp that you can gig with and this is loud enough. It'll, it'll put out enough. If you are a tube fan, I really recommend... I mean, I have a deluxe reverb, a 1965 deluxe reverb. I don't think you can beat that for the money if you want the best tube roll or the best tube amp ever made. It's the most recorded amp in all of music history. So that tells you everything you need to know about it. But it is expensive. Like, let's see what the deluxe reverb, I believe it's 1600 right now. Yeah, 1699. I have heard that, uh, I've actually played through these, the Tone Master series. The Tone Master is basically their one-to-one -one replica of it. And they're really good. Uh, and look, you can get them used for, for a little off 2010, 65 reissue. The only issue with tube gear and really the reason why I've made the switch over to digital is that you've got to, you've got to baby them because tubes are expensive to replace right now. There was a shortage. I don't know what the market's like right now. Cause I'm, I'm all digital. I still have my deluxe reverb. I'll never get rid of it because it's just my baby. And every now and then I'll use my Tollmaster Pro as a pedal board and I'll just run it straight into it. But that's an expensive rig. You know, that right there, that's almost like a $4,000 rig. Uh, and again, all this you get over time. So don't think you gotta get all this gear at once. I just kind of want to give you guys like some options of what I would really recommend. The only issue is that if you're going to go the tube world and you're going to say like, oh, I'm going to play through amps only, then it gets a little bit more expensive for recording because now we got to worry about sound treating a room. We got to worry about sound isolation and we need to worry about microphone and mic placement. So now we got to figure out how do we you know, how do we actually mic the amp? And if you're familiar with my Tollmaster Pro videos, that right there is basically the impulse response section of the Tollmaster Pro. When it comes to digital tones, this is why I think getting into a modeler is like, man, you just can't beat it. On the amp modeling side, this is why I think the value proposition for getting into digital tones is just so good. And especially right now, because like digital is really good right now, you know, for the, the sound enthusiasts who say that nothing beats tube, that's true. I'll give you that, but 99% of the people listening to us play will not know if it's a tube amp, nor will they care if it's a tube amp or a solid state device. So here's like the value proposition. If you go the tube world, it's going to be a pain in the butt to record because you got to get a microphone, you got to treat the room, you got to do all the sound isolation thing. You can't get mic bleed because then, you know, you don't want the metronome coming through your recording. All these things that I've learned over time, you got to worry about. And then you got to build a pedal board around it. Unless if like all you want is a clean tone, which is great. Most of the time you want at least like a boost or a compressor, like pedals get really expensive really quick. When you're looking at modelers, uh, I'm just going to be real with you. They're all great. You know, sure, some are better than others, but once you get past like a certain threshold and you're looking at the big brands, like if you're looking at Line 6, Fender Tonemaster Pro, Neural DS, or uh, Neural's Quad Cortex, or any of the Fractal stuff, all of those name brands are really good. You just need to figure out what's going to work best for you. And they all have their strengths. Like for example, Helix, the cab section is pretty weak, but if you buy your own impulse responses, then it doesn't matter. Helix is also battle tested. It's been around the longest. It's probably one of the most developed floor units out there. I love the Tonemaster Pro. The strength of the Tonemaster Pro is that it's very intuitive to use. It's very easy and it's very tactile. You see things, you turn knobs and it feels like real hardware. So it's going to feel like an iPhone. You know, the Neural DSP Quad Cortex. Neural DSP makes some of the the best plugin so you're getting all that in a small form factor um, and then i also own an axe fx3 now the axe fx3 is like the mac daddy when it comes to amp modelers like it is the end all be all the only thing is, is that it's big and it's expensive for smaller units so they've got floor units you can go with the fc9 or fm9 fm3 um, any of the fractal stuff is going to be really good you just got to figure out what you need and i think 
that's the hardest part and that's probably why so many of y'all watch these videos because you're trying to figure out either you've got the gear and you're trying to learn it or you're trying to make sure is this the right gear for me and i'm just gonna be real with you there's no one who can really tell you that that's something that you just need to really sit back and think like you know here are some questions i would ask myself do am i wanting to play in a band and gig or am i wanting to just practice guitar or do i want to write and record songs or do i want to do all three of those things because having gear that can do all three is also another justification to your wife of why you need to spend 1700 on a modeler you're welcome i'm a big fan of going the digital modeling world because it does all this thing it does all these things remarkably well and if you get an fr cab to go with it I really don't think you're missing out in the tube world. Yeah, you may not know what it smells like when tubes are cooking or, you know, you may not know what it's what it sounds like when a deluxe reverb is cranked. But to be honest, your hearing is probably grateful for it. And uh, it's expensive to have that experience. Go play someone else's gear or go try it out at Guitar Center and be that guy. Do it. You only live once, baby. Um, yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is keep in mind a budget. Whatever your goal, whatever your threshold is, here are the things you need to keep in mind. One IO, depending on what you're trying to do, depends on like the cables you need uh, and also the inputs and outputs of it. So like for me, not only do I record a lot of guitar, but I do a lot of MIDI work. I needed something that can also handle MIDI that had enough in and out port so that way I can do things like run my synthesizer through my Tone Master Pro so I can record it directly into Ableton or Logic. Also, because the Tone Master Pro and the Axe FX3 have MIDI capabilities, I can control them and I can automate things so I can use that for performing my own music then i can also have that midi controlling things like a light show when i finally get to that place you know so for me i have unlimited flexibility for my creativity but i am also someone who's in the pursuit of music professionally and trying to do this is like my livelihood so with that you should go listen to my album and continue to support me <laughs> uh but you know all these things are, you really need to think about it because if anyone tells you like, oh yeah, the quad cortex is the best thing to get, it's like, for what? You know, like I, I a lot of people reach out to me on Facebook and, and Instagram, especially since I've been doing these videos, asking me like, do I really think the Tone Master Pro is, is that great? and do I recommend it? And for me, my answer is always, well, it depends. You know, if you want something that feels great and it's fun to use, absolutely. I don't think you can beat it. But at the same time, you know, if, if you don't have any intentions of ever playing live, recording music or doing anything of that, like it's a really expensive toy to just sit in your room. But if you have the money to spend on it, it's fun to use. I really enjoy it. I just think that, you know, if your budget's on the lower end side and you're just doing this for fun, get an interface, get some plugins, have a ton of fun. If it grows, if that passion grows to something a little bit more strong than just playing in the bedroom now let's take a look at budget and and rig building uh because i think like where a lot of people kind of get themselves in trouble is they buy all this gear and they just expect it to sound great and while while it does you still got to learn it now that these systems are so complex and they do so many things it can be overwhelming to learn how to use this stuff i know i felt that way like a year ago when i started getting into digital tones i was like bro like when i got the axe fx3 i'm just now getting into the axe fx3 and i've been doing doing this since what probably last summer because the axe fx3 is like man you open it up and you look at what all the different amps and all the different effects and if you've never had access to this type of stuff it's overwhelming I, i'm gonna just i'm not gonna sugarcoat it sure you can use just all the presets and i'm sure you can get by but where's the fun in that you want to build your own rig and make it sound how you're used to you know yeah i think that's all i got i hope that helps you out again you know i would say that i would put more money into an amplifier than i would a guitar kind of just like as an overall theme having better audio come out is more important than having a nicer instrument now once you get a nice amp that's decent now let's start worried about getting a better guitar or upgrading our current guitar uh, and again it's always going to be cheaper to upgrade your guitar than to buy a new guitar and so if you like your guitar let me tell you something there is no guitar out there better than the one that you love i'm just going to be honest with you that's an expensive lesson i learned and i'm gonna say that again there is no better guitar on the market than the one you already love so if you've got something you love, but it's not doing certain things for you, please try upgrading it before you buy another instrument. But hey, I hope this video has helped. I hope you found some value from it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Let me know what your goals are with music. I want to know if some of this gear that I talked about, if it's actually relevant to you, if you enjoyed it. And also, if you listen to my album, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I just did a live stream yesterday talking at doing the album release party. So if you want to hear a little bit more about the music, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, and with that, I just want to say thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video.